Well, hello folks, I hope you're all well. In this video, we're gonna see a clearer picture of the agenda of Babylon. In a few moments, I'm gonna show you a TV commercial that was released by Glenn Fiddich. And this commercial shows us a clear picture of the humanistic self-elevation, the philosophy that underpins the rise of the Antichrist. And so I'll show you that in a few moments, but just to introduce this, I want to just really help you today to, to understand the nature of this world, of this reality that we live in. Folks, we are in a spiritual battle, and I don't think sometimes we always realize the extent of that. I mean, the Bible tells us that our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers in high places. And that is truly what we're facing. And, you know, we go about our day-to-day -day lives and maybe it doesn't always feel like that. But I tell you, we are surrounded by souls. We are surrounded by eternal souls. If you are a Christian, you are a fisher of men. And that is what, who Jesus is. He comes to save and rescue souls. But there's also another one. There's also the devil. He comes and is hunting. He is hunting for souls. He's hunting to bring souls into destruction and he blinds the minds of unbelievers. Now, who was it? Who is the figure in the Old Testament that was referred to as the hunt master or as the mighty hunter? Can you think who that is? Yes, Nimrod, the mighty hunter, who was that first prototype of the Antichrist. He was referred to as a mighty hunter. He was a hunter for souls. And that's what you see here, uh, the hunt master, the horned god like Apollo. And that is what this is depicting. In some pagan circles, they believe that the symbol of a stag is the symbol of a spiritual pursuit. So like you would pursue a stag in hunting, they see it as a spiritual pursuit to go to the other, other side of the veil. And that's what it is. The, the Antichrist, the, the enemy, draws people into deception. He draws people into a false and counterfeit spirituality. And in so doing, that represents the hunt for your soul because he's trying to lure you in to the counterfeit, into the lie. Uh, which will result in people going to hell and rejecting God. Okay, so let's watch this Glenn Fiddich commercial. It's just a short one, but this will show you the humanistic philosophy of the Antichrist, of the new Babylon, and that is exactly what we're seeing being pushed in our society as we get ever closer to the Beast Confederation. The mind is an amazing thing. Can make us love and hate mindless or mindful. It gives us the power of logic and the gift of irrationality. It's what makes us more than binary and lets us play with maybe, why, and what if. It searches for patterns and ways to experiment. A mind that's mastered its art is free to go beyond convention. To create a new craft beer. Experimental series from Glenfiddich. Really showing you there this humanistic philosophy. The philosophy of the Antichrist about climbing up that Tower of Babel in defiance of the Creator and the, the collective efforts of humanity to unite in defiance of God. The stag leading you into a false spirituality and the stag as a representation of the horned god, Apollo. And this is what this commercial is showing. It, look at this, it's showing you that next stage in human evolution. Do you remember Nietzsche uh, that Hitler was particularly inspired by? Nietzsche, the ubermensch, the over man. And that's what we see, that this enlightenment, these, these shots in this commercial of that human enlightenment where their, their brain is illuminated there. Now the single eye symbolism 
and then it compares mindlessness to mindfulness. And we go to this forest, this uh, lady that is rising up, she's elevating like in a false spirituality, in an Eastern philosophy. You see on the right-hand side there, you've got the sun. You've got the sun coming through the trees. So this is what it's about, is that rising of the sun in the East, the Eastern philosophy, the pagan religion. And she is elevating in the forest, in the woods. Uh, we've got the chess players, like playing the game, like the social manipulators, they're playing a game in order to win and to get checkmate, which is what he does in a second. And then through the smoke, we see this, this guy coming through and he says, the future is more than binary, which I'm sure I don't need to go into the agendas that are being proposed in this. It's what makes us more than binary. It's what makes us more than binary. Elevation of so-called logic and reason, the enlightenment. Uh, you see here that the chess player, he does a checkmate. He makes the final move. So as we see all this agenda forming in this commercial, you see that he then is seen to make that final move. Checkmate. He wins the game. So the social manipulation is complete it's uh, successful the babylon reworking the secret societies and then we switch to an artificial insemination these things are on the one hand being pushed in society you know sex without reproduction and reproduction without sex that you know you're having babies outside of the natural way uh, and being produced that was just one angle of it but also it's it's tying into this symbolism which was seen before it's that new creation so it's making a new creation you see when it's the, the insemination is done uh, you see that the cells split so it, it starts off with two then it goes to four and then it splits and splits and splits it fragments into many pieces and then you see that the light the light comes into the middle of it so it's almost that atomic level recreation thing again because that that explodes when they create this new creation this artificial new creation you see that it then splits and splits and then it explodes in space and then we go into this it's like a big bang again this artificial new creation remember the antichrist counterfeits god in in so many ways of this new creation and the counterfeit of the millennial reign. Here is their false god. And that's what it morphs into. It morphs into their false god Apollo, which is essentially a reference to Nimrod. Apollo, Nimrod, that false horned god, that alpha, aleph figure, the leader, the ox. Um, that is the false one. It's a counterfeit of God. It plays God. It pretends to be as God, as it says all, you know, in the New Testament prophecies about the man of sin. And this shows the entire birthing sequence of their false messiah, starting with the artificial insemination to the birth of the beast and the false signs in the cosmos, a mimicking of the birthing of Christ, an inversion of it, and remember, the secret societies within Romanism, this is their false gospel, to bring their false messiah through the veil into our world. And with it, this idea in the narration that the beast is going to take the world beyond convention and break mankind out of the box and set us free through a false illumination, just like in the Gnostic doctrine. A mind that's mastered its art is free to go beyond convention, to go beyond convention. And then we go through into some dimensional gate symbolism. So it seems to be referencing, you know, that behind the veil uh, and that usual stuff where they, they show they want to bring their so-called Christ to our world, to our realm their cosmic Christ and all of that. But we know that's the Antichrist, that's the false Christ. And I don't know exactly what the Antichrist 
who it will be or what it exactly will be like. I mean, we have some indications from the Bible of prophecy, but I think you can get into a lot of speculation at this stage. And when it comes, when these things unfold, if we're still here, we will know uh, full well who it is and what it's all about because God gives us the discernment. So there's nothing to worry about in terms of identifying it at this time because when it happens, it will be without question. And that's the deer, that's the stag. Remember, the stag represents that horned god alpha figure like the bull, just in the same way. And th and that's what they're looking for. This is what this is showing. It's showing that a leader is coming, a leader of the beast confederation of that world order. Remember, Nimrod was known as a mighty hunter. So we're told in the last days that the Antichrist, the man of sin, will wear out the saints, people who, res who refuse to take the mark, there is talk of beheading in the book of Revelation. And I'm not saying these things to scare anyone because we know, you know, if you're truly the Lord's, he will get you through it. He will give us the strength to get through it. In fact, that's been a pattern throughout the Bible and throughout history with these figures. You have, say, Nero, Roman Emperor Nero. He hunted after the Christians. He was a type of Antichrist. You have King Herod in the Bible, in the New Testament. King Herod hunted after the line of Christ, after the babies to try and destroy the Messiah and the Davidic line. You have King Saul. Israel chose their own king and they got King Saul. And he ended up that he was he is actually a type of Antichrist. And what did King Saul do? He chased after David. He hunted after David. He got jealous of David and he tried to hunt him down. And you've got all of these figures. And it says in the book of Revelation, the dragon will be wroth with the woman and go after the, her, the seed of her offspring, uh, those who keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. Hitler also did the same thing. He hunted, hunt or be hunted. He hunted. So it's all linked to that prototype of, of Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter. Nimrod is that prototype of that Antichrist figure that stood up above every, everything and, and raised himself in self-elevation and also brought the world together in a false unity, in one language and one tongue. Much like we see even in the Baha'i religion where they, they are aspiring to unite the world in a new living language and Europe with the unfinished Tower of Babel that is built in the European Parliament and also we've seen some posters for that in the past that's, that talks about uniting the world in a living language. But when you look at some of the commercials for this Jägermeister, and we've, we've looked at these before, it just shows very very prominent and obvious symbolism in relation well, you look at that, this ad campaign for them, the Master Hunter. You've got the, the Jägermeister bottle chained up, trying to be released from these chains, and the slogan is, Release the Beast. And basically, Apollyon the Destroyer. Release the Beast. And that's what this is about. Release the Beast, the Master Hunter. Release the Beast. And, that, and that's what this is showing. It's showing that horned god with a cross, the Antichrist with six horns on either side, and release the beast from the pit. And remember, we also showed that other Jägermeister commercial where he's drawn and lured in by that stag when he goes to a nightclub, the, the main protagonist in this commercial and he goes upstairs there's symbolism of the moon of the goddess of the stag the male and female aspect and the the goddess is is there and it, leading him to get that mark on his skin via a tattoo so he sits in this chair and he literally gets marked by this kind of mark of the beast scenario and uh, and that's all part of this apollo horned god uh, advertisement of Jägermeister.
Every year, a stag sheds its antlers. It must face uncertainty. Alone. Exposed. But only by embracing the unknown can it grow stronger. Reaching the top is just the beginning. Thank Fiddich, we're next. And this always ties in in some fashion, of course, to Rome, because Rome, again, on that statue is, of Daniel is uh, is the extension of this, and it began with Babylon. So you've got that spiritual deception, that false Christianity, that pretending to be Christian when it's actually false doctrine that leads to hell. So that's the spiritual hunt for souls. And you've also got the physical hunt that there's been many great persecutions in the past and physically hunting those that are true Christians. And so I think this all ties in together with the prophecy of the last days and the rise of the Antichrist, of which you can see in smaller ways through figures like Hitler and others and Nero, but you'll see that this is what is it's being talked about. And so you've got the master of the hunt. May God give us grace to stand in these times and no fear the Lord is in control and remember that even in the worst persecution that God uses it for good and that many Christians die with a smile on their face if that happens because remember when Stephen was being stoned in the book of Acts he looked up and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God so he's there interceding for us and he will give us strength to get through whatever comes our way. Remember that the Antichrist, the one that stands up and declares himself as God and rules this world and leads the world in the beast kingdom. Remember all of these things are leading up to the return of Jesus Christ and God uses everything for good. What is meant for evil, evil God will use for good. So we can be confident in that. <laughs> 